Over the past several months, Google has been rolling out their new unified advertiser verification policy. This process must be started by June 30th, otherwise your Google Ads account could be paused. The whole goal of this new verification process is to offer more transparency to users who are seeing your ads. They'll get more information about who is running the ads and who is funding the ads. So in this video, we will show you what information is needed to submit to Google for verification. This is going to now show a disclosure within several types of ad formats. So we'll show you what the disclosure looks like, and then we'll walk through a full advertiser verification process using our own account. So you can get one example of what you will need to get started. Before we walk through the advertiser verification process, I do want to share what information will need to be provided because it can help you prep for advertiser verification and make the whole setup process a lot easier. So first we'll just briefly cover what information you will need to provide. The first is telling Google if you are advertising as an ad agency or as your own business. You will see in the verification process, it's really just choose one or the other. Next, you'll have to clarify who will pay for the ad. Are you sourcing these ads yourself or is a third party helping you pay for these ads? Next, you will need to verify which industry that you are in. And then you will need to clarify if you're advertising your own products or services or somebody else's. And that kind of ties into who's paying for the ads too. If Google's whole thing is about transparency, you will need to call out if anybody else is funding the ads. It could provide further insights about what type of business you're running and why you're advertising to certain users. So then, after you provide this information, how does Google use the information? Well, the simplest way is Google uses it to verify your business and the purpose of the operations, making sure that you are a legit company or organization. But physically, Google will take this information and you may have already seen this already, but they've started to include disclosures in a variety of different ad formats. This disclosure will include public information that pretty much anyone can view if they choose to view the disclosure. So then you may want to ask what information will be public. The first is the advertiser name. What is the name of the company or organization, but not just the name, also the name history. If you've changed your business names a few times, that will be public. This prevents shady companies who may have earned a bad reputation from trying to really start over fresh with a brand new name. We will see soon ad creatives will also be visible. And in the next section, we'll show you how dates and locations of where your ad served. If any ads were removed, so some historical activity, if there were any suspensions due to not only policy reasons, but also legal action and then simple business contact information. The disclosure, which can include the information you see on the screen right now, can appear on search ads, YouTube ads, as well as display ads. So let's look at examples of each of them. First, we will look at search. I just typed in CRM software as my search query. We see one ad example at the top. As of right now, next to the display URL, you'll see these three dots, and it's gonna say, why this ad? If a user clicks on it, my ad center pops up. And here we're seeing additional information. There's the advertiser name and the advertiser location. If you choose to click on see more ads, Google will open up the ads transparency center. There we get the name and location again, but here we start to see ad creatives. And right now it's saying anytime. I'm not gonna go through a ton of them, but you can see we can change the date ranges. And this is where it goes back to any historical ads, even ones that may have been removed at the time. All again for full transparency of what they were advertising. We also said we get to view different ad formats. So right now what we see on the screen is just text ads. But if we want to look at what image ads they were running, there's information there. If I go back up and switch it, we can see if they were running any video or YouTube ads. And I don't have any special access. The ads transparency center is available to the public. Anyone who may see an ad from this company can review the same information I am viewing. If I go back up to the search results, they'll give you more information about why you're seeing the ad. From what I've seen, this doesn't include any additional business information needed for advertiser verification, but I did want to show you what the rest of the disclosure would look like. Okay, so that was a search ad example. Let me pop open a YouTube ad. Here's an example of an in-stream ad. This disclosure is a lot smaller. It's going to be this little information and you can see it shows up as saying why this ad. Now I understand this is just one ad format, certain ad formats like in feed that lives off to the side. You would have to click on the three dots. If it is an ad to get more information, it should pull up the same disclosure. But if I open this up, here's potentially where some of the information will go. 
And if you click on Add Settings, that'll open up your personal My Ad Center, similar to what we saw on the search side. Now let's look at a display example. I'm on ESPN, a lot of placements on Google's display network. Here's an example of a Google ad. I'm gonna click on the Ad Choices logo. Here we see it is a Google ad. So now we can look at why this ad, and this one's giving us much more examples. There's the advertiser. You can see more ads by the advertiser again, and then more information about why I'm seeing this particular ad. So now that we know what information could potentially appear and where these disclosures could show up that would show the public information, let's go to Google Ads and walk through the advertiser verification setup. I'm gonna do this process through our demo account. So understand that this is just one way to do it. As I go through this process, I can really only do it one way. Because once it's verified, it's good. I can't go back and try to show you another example of it. So use this run through as a high level walkthrough so you're just familiar with the process, but understand depending on your industry and your business, the verification process could be different for you. So besides any emails or notifications that you're getting, to find the advertiser verification section, head up to tools and settings, and under billing, and all of my accounts right now, it's at the very bottom, advertiser verification. There is a bunch of information about why they're doing it, but it's pretty straightforward to just start verification. Now here's something we already mentioned. The first question they're asking us is, is your organization an advertising agency? Yes, Michelle and I manage clients, but we're not in our MCC account. We're in the main Paid Media Pros account, and we have run ads before promoting certain videos. So in this case, I'm gonna say no, because we have zero clients within this account. So by selecting this, Google's then asking who pays for the ads. And there is a blurred out part there because we already have a payment profile set up within this account. In our case, we do pay Google directly. Even if you're not an ad agency, many ad agencies take on the entire billing or invoicing responsibilities. So even though this may not be a part of an MCC, it's still possible for an ad agency to have that. It all depends on who has access to the account and who has that responsibility. So, so far, pretty straightforward answers. It's either one or the other. So let's save and continue. Already, they're letting us know what we'll need for verification. In our case, we'll need our legal name and our address. Time to start with verification. And as we can see, they're asking for the name and the location. That's pretty much what they asked for on the last screen. If I scroll down a little bit, on this page, there's really nothing else. If you have a DUNS number for your organization, if that's how you pronounce the acronym, I'll admit I'm not familiar with this, so clearly we don't have one. Google's saying it's for faster verification, but I'm gonna start filling this out, and then I'm just gonna jump ahead to the next step because I can't show you any of this information anyway. So the blurred out section includes all of the information Google asked for in the fields on the previous screen. I can confirm it's all correct, but we're still getting this warning that they weren't able to verify our information. So now I have to upload a specific document. In our case, I have a letter from the IRS, that's easy enough, but you can see in the documents we accept section, here are a few options of forms you may wanna get ready before going through the advertiser verification process. So let me go and upload our document. There it is, and then I will submit this information. And now I have to wait. Please note that once you start the advertiser verification process, you have 30 days to successfully complete the verification. In our case, we're just a simple account promoting our videos. Potentially in your account, you may need to fill out additional verification depending on the country that you're in or the industry that you're in. So all of those will need to be successfully completed within 30 days. If you do not complete all of the verification requirements within the 30 days, your account could be paused. So for now, I'm just gonna click got it. It's letting us know who started it and on what date. And then now I'm just gonna wait. And then we'll come back and close things out once I have verification finalized. Okay, it has been three business days and we did get notification via email that the information we submitted for advertiser verification was approved and you can see our identity has been verified. Now I said it took three business days. Part of it was a little bit over a weekend so we had to wait a little bit longer than three days but it was that minimum mark that they said it could be in between three and five business days. So we're done and hopefully that gives you an idea of what is needed to begin the advertiser verification process. Remember, as I said in the intro, you just have to start by June 30th, not complete it. But once you start the process, you only have 30 days to complete it. Hopefully you saw how easy it is to get everything started and completed so you can move on it now to make sure that you don't see any downtime with your account. If you have any questions on how this new unified advertiser verification process works, please let us know in the comments below.
Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.